Hi everyone, good morning, uh, good afternoon, wherever uh, you are living now. Uh, my name is uh, Shayma Khalil and I will uh, uh, say the introduction for today's presentation. Um, welcome to our discussion today on Afro-Iraqi rituals, stigma, discrimination, and resilience. Um, in Arabic, it's Tukus Mujtama' al-Bashar al-Samra fi al-Iraq, Wasmat al-Ar, al-Tamiz al-Ansari, wa al-Takayyut. Uh, I will uh, introduce uh, the IRP, Iraqi and American Reconciliation Project, uh, which is parten partnering today uh, with, the, with the Lotus Cultural League on this presentation for today. Uh, the Iraqi and American Reconciliation Project uh, is uh, uh, founded in 2007. Uh, and the Iraqi and American Reconciliation Project located in Minneapolis, Minnesota, and that builds uh, bridges of communication, understanding, and support between Iraqis and Americans after decades of sanctions, war, and occupation. Uh, and now uh, I will uh, move to uh, explain the housekeeping for today and the feature that we provide for uh, today's session, it's interpreting feature. So uh, we provide the interpretation feature uh, today. So you can choose uh, listening uh, to the show in both Arabic and English languages. So you can switch now and choose the language that you want. And now I will move to introduce uh, our uh, presenters for today. I will start with uh, Dr. Amr al-Azraqi. Uh, Dr. Amr al-Azraqi is an Arab-Canadian playwright, literary translator, theater of the oppressed practitioner and associate professor and coordinator of studies in Islamic and Arab culture Arab. program at Renzen University College, University of Waterloo. Al-Azraqi is the author of the Discourse of War in Contemporary Theater in Arabic, co-editor and co-translator of Contemporary Plays from Iraq, a rehearsals for revolution, an approach to theater of the oppressed in Arabic, and co-editor and co-translator of Arabic poetry by female poets in consequence. The Common Poetry Foundation and Talking Writing. He, he has recently translated representations of the others, the image of black people in the medieval Arab imaginary by the Bahraini uh, critic Nader Kadon, which will be published by uh, McGill Queens University Press. And now uh, I will introduce uh, the, the second presenter for today, Thawra Yusuf Yaqub, is a retired Afro-Iraqi professor of theater. She is an actor, dancer, and director. She taught acting and uh, body techniques for 20 years at the University of Basra. She has a bachelor's, master's, and PhD in performing arts from the College of Fine Arts, uh, Baghdad University. Currently, she is a project manager for our partner today, the, uh, the Lotus Cultural Women's League. Uh, and now uh, I will turn the microphone over to Dr. Amr to start his presentation. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Um, greeting from Toronto, um, Canada. Marhaban. Uh, I will start my presentation on Afro Iraqi rituals, stigma, discrimination, and resilience. I will share my screen now um, and turn my camera off. Uh, I'd like to start with uh, um, learning about the Afro Iraqi communities. Who are they? Afro-Iraqi people make 5% of the Iraqi population, uh, which is, uh, Iraqi population is 42 million, 
And uh, Iraq has been their home since the ninth century, mostly as part of forced immigration due to, to the slave trade. Throughout, uh, uh, throughout their history, Afro-Iraqis have been subjected to oppression, racism, and discrimination. And although they are born and raised in Iraqi culture, they are unfortunately pejoratively represented and treated as the other. Their rituals originated from various diasporic lineages, have been disparaged as barbaric and irreligious. Now, if you ask um, Afro-Iraqis about their origin, some respond generically as uh, Africa, but others specifically reply, our great grandfather is Bilal al-Habashi, um, originally an Abyssinian, Ethiopian Arab, Bilal lived from 580 through 640 AD. He was an emancipated slave freed by Abu Bakr, one of the prophets Muhammad's companion, and later become the first Muaddin in uh, Islam. Bilal is clearly a source of pride to modern day Afro-Iraqis. Um, although, I would like to move the slide. Uh, although uh, a genealogy linking black presence Mesopotamia to modern day Afro-Iraqi would be uh, suppositional at best, theories posit African migration into ancient Mesopotamia still exist. Some scholars like Alid al-Khamisi refer to the assumption of a Kushite um, lineage of Afro-Iraqis to the dark-skinned King Nimrud and his African army, or to the Alamite with African features, or to the Sumerian with black complexion represented by Gudia, King of Lagash. However, the more popular theory is that Afro-Iraqi were brought from Africa to Iraq through different eras and for different purposes. First, they were brought from East and West Africa to Iraq as a slave during the ninth century when Baghdad was the capital during the Islamic Abbasid Caliphate. They worked as servants, laborers, sailors, and even soldiers. However, many Afro-Iraqis identify spiritual forebear that predates the Abbasid era. Second, although the slave trade existed in East Africa for several centuries on a minor scale, Historians generally agree that it spiked in the 18th century, flourished significantly during the 19th century, and peaked sometimes around the 1870s. However, the biggest wave of slavery from Africa to the Middle East was carried out in the 19th century and early 20th century during the Ottoman Empire and British colonization of the Arabian Gulf. This wave of slavery was intensified due to the increase of demands on products such as dates and perils in European and North American markets, which, which in turn promoted the appetite for slave trade and labor. African slaves brought to the Arab world, quote, were obtained through riding villages, trickery, or exchanging slaves for goods. Now I'd like to mention a very significant historical event that related to the history of Afro-Iraqis. It's called Azanj Rebellion or Revolt, which happened during the Abbasid era. In the ninth century, the Zanj living, the Zanj here refers to the black people in general and uh, the slaves, uh, African slaves during the Abbasid era. They refer to them as Zanj or in Arabic as Zanuj. In the ninth century, the Zanj living condition were harsh and unbearable. Provided with little to live on, they had to dig ditches, drain marshlands, and clean salt flats by removing the salt crust and extract salt from the seawater. Living under such wretched circumstances and mistreated, the Zanj uh, took action. The Zanj rebellion was not led by a black person nor was exclusively carried out by black people. Between the years 869 and 883, Ali bin Muhammad led an army of African slaves, serfs, peasants, tribal Arabs, and others to fight against the caliphate authority. The rebellion ended in defeat at the hands of al uh, the, the caliph, who returned to Baghdad with Ali's head. 
whether uh, the rebellion is best defined as a manifestation of the class struggle inherent in feudalism or a race struggle where the Zend were treated as inferior and subhumans or resistant against both, the Zend rebellion or revolt is considered to be the first biggest organized African revolt against an oppressive regime in the history of Iraq and Islam. Unfortunately, Afro-Iraqis themselves have not documented or preserved their own version of the revolt. In fact, most of Afro-Iraqis Afro have limited or no knowledge of the Zend rebellion. Now I'd like to move to a very uh, important topic of this presentation, which is talking about discrimination and racism. Um, unfortunately, discrimination and racism against Afro-Iraqis and Black Arabs in general, Afro-Arabs in general, are unfortunately rooted in Arab culture and are informed by long history of negative representation. Bahre <clears throat> sorry. Bahraini critic and scholar Nader Kalam, Dr. Nader Kalam, has coined the term al-istifraq, which means uh, Africanism, to refer to an emerging field dedicated to the study of the representation of Black Arabs in Arabic writings, including classical medieval literature, uh, books on geography, astronomy, astrology, history, etc. And uh, he found that the longest lasting stereotype which he called the mother stereotype, is that black people depicted as roaming, um, roaming animals or raging beasts, creatures ranked between humans and animals or subhumans with enormous sexual energy with a natural tendency to immorality and decadence and a tendency to what we call in the Arab world, a tarab, a state of, uh, as I uh, explained that, a state of uh, ecstatic engagement, enchantment, or rapture promoted usually by music and singing. <laughs> Dr. Kalum theorizes that the negative image of Blacks or Black people in Arab culture emerged from three streams. The first is a controversial anthropological conception that culture, including religion, language, laws, and values, define what it means to be human. Second, the biblical narrative of Noah's Noah scarcing his son, Ham, and his descendants, and are stood to be dark skin with servitude. And the third is a Greek philosopher, Ptolemy's theory of, of the seven climes, which postulate that a person's geographical location determined their race, as the proximity to the sun prepared humans in ways ranging from raw and undercooked to burn and overcooked. I'd like to share with you this quote from uh, a famous uh, 10th century Persian historian and geographer. Um, his name is uh, Ibn al-Faqih al-Hamadani, who's this quote in his racist description of Iraqis, he uses culinary language to illustrate the difference between white people, black people, and Iraqis as brown people. He said the people of Iraq and I, uh, maybe I, I just let you read uh, what is written instead of reading it to you. I'll give you a few moments to read as a quote. This quote actually shows uh, the influence of these, the three streams or the three theories that I mentioned before especially the Greek philosopher Ptolemy's theory of the seven climes. Now, moving to racism and discrimination against Iraqis in particular. In today's Iraq, the, the, aforementioned, the aforementioned disparaging narrative feeds into the racism and discrimination that Afro-Iraqis face every day. They are called racist names and described in offensive ways. The most common words we uh, in Iraq they use people use against or to refer to black people or Afro Iraqi is abd, which means a slave. Other words are commonly used, such as um, such as Abu Lil, Abu Samra, Wahshatawa, and Nili, Tis, Tangura, and so on. Many words. I'm just giving you examples of these. 
Uh, Afro-Iraqis are portrayed as infamous entertainer with sexual prowess, irrational thinking, and bad body smell. These and other racist slurs and stereotypes have considerably impacted the Afro-Iraqi community, contributing to the withdrawal from participation in their community, decreased self-esteem, and lowered ambition. Even some of the younger generation resort to cosmetic surgery, such as nose jobs and skin whitening and bleaching to conceal their African features. Moreover, although interracial marriages are stigmatized by non-Afro-Iraqis, a few intermarriages, which I mean non-Afro-Iraqi men to Afro-Iraqi women, occur, but usually end in divorce. Those divorced Afro-Iraqi women are left with the full responsibility to survive and raise their children on their own. I'd like to share with you two of these photos. Um, as you can see, the first one is a famous, very um, popular candy in the Arab world in my generation. Until recently, I don't know if they stopped producing this uh, chocolate candy, and it's called Ra'as al-Abd, which means slave's head. As you can see, uh, a, a black uh, kid in the, in the picture, a black uh, infant. And the other picture, as you can see on this vehicle, it's written female slave, Al Abd al Basrawi. And this picture was taken by Ilham and Dr. Thora very recently, like a, a month ago, I think, in the street of Basra. <laughs> Now, in politics, Afro-Iraqis are underrepresented. They are denied any position in the parliament and official government. They are either unemployed or work in precarious and low-paying jobs. For example, cleaners, drivers, guards, or work as drummers in local bands. After the fall of, the, of uh, Saddam's regime in 2003, Afro-Iraqis' uh, political consciousness was revived. <clears throat> And they founded the Free Iraqi Movement in 2007. However, the founder of the movement, Jalal Diab, was assassinated in Basra in 2013. <clears throat> Even though slavery was abolished in the 19th century in most of the Arab countries and in, in 1924 in Iraq, Afro-Iraqis still face discrimination and racism. The current socioeconomic status of Afro-Iraqis is not radically different from the condition of their ancestors in the Abbasid era. They live in the poorest neighborhood with a high rate of unemployment and Ill illiteracy. Society looks down upon them and portray them with their rituals uh, and their rituals with offensive stereotypes. Now I'd like to move to Afro-Iraqi rituals to introduce the rituals, and then Dr. Thaura will talk about their significance. Afro-Iraqi rituals have been maintained through erasure. Their transmission depending on the private nature of the host communities. The importance of these rituals lies in their restorative power. They have been maintaining communal identity and fostering empowerment and transformation. They're held for special ceremonial purposes, such as healing spiritual illness while honoring the presence of the czar, a visiting good or evil uh, spirit, treating a sick person or honoring a dead person or their ancestors. The enactment of these rituals highlight and reaffirm the spiritual and social values of the community and reestablish their harmony with their spiritual realm and with one another. These places are, they, they take place in a, in a place called Makid, Al Makid, a place for Afro Iraqis to sustain their identity and renew their communication with the divinity, ancestors, spirits, and each other. The word Makid is derived from the Arabic word Makid, mean, meaning plot or mach, machination. These Makids are are known by the names of their owners or by the, by titles or by the birthplace of the owner's grandfather, such as Makid al-Masri and Makid Isa ibn Atiq, Makid Wanika. Um, um, I'd like to uh, touch on the theories of origin. I mean, the origin of these rituals. 
There are two predominant theories concerning the origins of those rituals. The first contends that they, they originated from Africa. And the second, that they emerge locally in, around, uh, in, in the area around Basra. According to the first theory, Kenya. Kenya is the origin of the, for example, Nkaroka, Wagendo, Zerifo, Chitanga, Lewa. These are rituals names, names of rituals. In Kenya, specifically the coastal region of Zanzibar and Mombasa, these rituals are thought to have their roots in the Mombasa tribes and songs are used to preserve the coastal identity of these tribes. These rituals were transported either by the way, by way of, this, of the Red Sea, then the Arabian Peninsula, then to Basra or across the Arabian Sea, then the Arabian Gulf, then Basra. These rituals also spread to the Arabian Peninsula during the first era of the Abbasid Caliphate by merchant or East African, the Arab slave trade. When enslaved Kenyans were brought to Basra, um, <clears throat> sorry, when they are brought to Basra, they formed spiritual communities and practiced their rituals, which they sustain in bondage through rapture. <clears throat> the rite of Nuban, Nuban is a name of a ritual, is believed to have its origin in Southern Egypt, specifically the Nubia region, it was transported to Basra by way of the previous mentioned roots and actors. The Hbush ritual held from Abyssinia, Ethiopia currently. Um, with the transfer of these rituals to Basra came their intermingling with the city's local heritage and customs, including singing the Arabic language during the rites of Nuban, Chitanga, and Liawa. The second theory argues that the origin of these rituals especially Asade and al -Waya, are local, which refer to the period of Sufism and Dhikr, as the ritual in them depends on religious singing and the colloquial dialect or poems in classical Arabic. al sade that's the name of a ritual, is not part of the African heritage, but it is in fact a newer ritual, which began during the period of Sufism, whose largest schools were located in Basra. Basra was one of the first centers for Sufi and mystic movements led by prominent figures like Hassan al Hassan al Basri and Rabi al Adawiyah, Rabi al Adawiyah. During the 14th and 15th century, new schools and orders of Sufism called at Tariqa emerged as the Rafi'iyah, such as Al Rafi'iyah, founded by Sayyid Ahmed al Rafa'i. Al Qadiriyah, founded by Sheikh Abdul Qadir Al Gailani, and Al Sahra Wardiya, founded by Sheikh Shihab Al Din Al Sahra Wardi. Sufi Tariqa is a practice in a place called Tekia. Most Tekia places are located in close proximity to the Afro communities in Basra, and thus rituals like Al Sada might originate from that environment and era. The ritual of Sada. For example, utilize the Sufi poems, light drums are used as well as the same uh, tambourine, tambourine uh, used in Sufi dhikr circles. The use of a def, def is like the, the word tambourine. The def is a Middle Eastern tambourine, could imply that it is a Sufi ritual since in African rituals, drums are used instead. Now I move to the instruments used in these rituals. The owners of the Makid, we, and Makid, if you remember, I mentioned that word means the place where rituals are held. Um, they clean it before the arrival of invent, uh, invitees, cover the ground, then inspect the ritual tools, such as the drums, tambura, and manjur. Drums are African in origin, which include among others, merwas, limsonde, Chichanga, these are names of drums. And other instruments, such as the surnai and the uh, bato, which is, um, uh, that's another um, instrument used in these rituals. Marwas is a small cylindric double skinned originally used by African slave pearl divers in the Arabian Sea. Msonde, a Swahili drum, slightly tapered, one-ended drum used in places like Zanzibar, 
Chichanga, similar to Msonde, but smaller, slung over the shoulder and held to the side of the performer's body by shoulder strap. And um, musical instruments used in Basra rituals are made of organic materials. The tambura is fashioned from the trunk of perennial trees and the pick called silah, the weapon, is made from the horn of a bull. The exterior of the tambura is covered with cowhide, a, uh, with cowhide, um, sorry, and uh, the string are made from a cow's small intestine. The drums are made from a cowhide and sometimes the wooden drum is replaced by a light metal bowl due to the scarcity of old trees in Basra. I, would, I will stop at this point and will uh, give some time to my colleague, Dr. Thaura, to talk about the significance of these rituals. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you, Dr. Amr. Thank you. We appreciate uh, everything you said and all the infor like information about the Afro-Iraqi rituals. Yes, and now uh, I'm gonna share with you a short video about Afro-Iraqi rituals uh, before Dr. Athara starting her presentation. And uh, just a reminder for all the attendees, please uh, feel free to uh, type your question in the chat if you have any question or uh, to Dr. Amr and Dr. Athara. Yeah, we have a question to Dr. Amr. Uh, the, the first one from Catherine, she's asking, could you tell us what names the Afro-Iraqi community prefer to use for themselves? Thank you, Catherine. I think, uh, uh, and Dr. Thora can correct me if I'm wrong. Um, uh, we, have, um, uh, we have a word, Bashar uh, al-Samra, we call it al-Bashar al-Samra. They use uh, that. Um, but Dr. Thawra, you can hear me now. The question is... You can hear me, Dr. Wassan, yes. The differences in their own self, what do they call in Iraq? What do they call them? We call them the Samra. Do they call themselves the Bashar Samra too? No, we call them the Sood. And also, the Sood is the Sood. We call them the Abd. They call them the Sood? عبد. لأنه هو مجبول بالجهل. Okay. Mm. If I if I can translate that to uh, Dr. Thoris, she said that sometimes they call uh, themselves البشر السمراء, which means the people of dark skin, or sometimes they refer themselves to Asud. Asud means blacks, which black people, and some of them, due she said, due to ignorance, they call themselves slaves. صحيح so, دكتورة. نعم نعم صحيح. Yeah. So that's a question. Okay. The uh, second question from Miriam Ansara. She's asking at some point could Prof. Al Azraqi talk about the great Afro Arab poet Antar? Thank you. I think she means uh, Antar bin Shaddad. Yeah, I, Miriam, how, what should I speak? Um, how, like, how much do you want me to speak about Antara? Antara is born as a black uh, uh, person from Imra, uh, from a mother from Habasha, a Bassinian mother, owned by the father, uh, who is uh, an Arab. But I don't know what, what do you mean by talking about him? And do, do you want me to tackle uh, something in particular about his struggle as a black poet? I've, actually, what I'd like you to talk about is his place in Arab literature and culture, because yeah. it seems to me significant in this in this context that he's both black and one of, I mean, e even I know about him, even I have some of his poems. Yeah, I mean, nobody debate the importance, the significance of this poet. He uh, represent uh, he's considered one of the best. Uh, Arab poet, Arab poet, but from I mean black poet, Arab black poet, um, uh, who uh, actually tried to prove himself because of his blackness to be one of the greatest poets through uh, what we call it al-fuhula wal-furusiya. Fuhula, 
um, that's a term and concept. I mean, a concept in Arabic literature, a pre-Islamic literature for huda, means um, you have to not only uh, have chivalric and noble qualities to be among the fahula poets, but also your poetry should be um, uh, no lower than in quality, not lower than the previous poets of a jahili al muallaqat So Antara bin Shaddad um, uh, tried uh, everything to reach that point in order to be considered among the fahula. In addition to Furusiya, Furusiya uh, means uh, the, uh, the the chivalric uh, and uh, the courage, bravery, uh, etc., in fighting the enemies and defending one's honor and loyal uh, and being loyal to the tribe, etc. And he uh, set an example of that, and that's all according to Dr. Kalam Nader in his book. And he was trying to compensate for that. Uh, 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 the, the way that people look at him as a black poet. So he tried to prove to them that he's as equal as the Fahula poets uh, 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 from the Arab origin, non, non black poets. So he became uh, the best, uh, one of the best poets because of his tribe uh, and his, uh, his uh, uh, Fahula and Furusiya to be equal to other uh, poets in the Arab uh, world. I can talk more about him, but I don't know what else. Uh, he was he struggled, according to the biography of Antar Min Shaddad, he struggled. And most of his poems, he actually apologized for his blackness and, uh, and defend that with his furusiya and with his uh, fuhula, with his poetry, as strong, uh, very powerful poetry, and also as a powerful knight, furusiya's knighthood as well, how to be as, as a strong and brave man. Thank you, Dr. Amr. So we will go back and try to uh, open the video again. Let's see. <laughs> And uh, now I will uh, start uh, or turn the microphone over to Dr. Thaura. She will talk about the significant uh, role of Afro-Iraqi people and their heritage. Dr. Thaura, do you want to start now? Thank you, Mr. Shayma. Thank you, everyone. The first question. We may face why do Iraqi dark people, dark skinned people, want to preserve their heritage? The desire of the Iraqis of dark skin to preserve their heritage is because of their faith that their history is an achievement of their ancestors and the slavery they were suffering from. The dark-skinned Iraqi desire to preserve and protect their cultural heritage and comes from their belief that this heritage is what the ancestors accomplished in the past and during the period of slavery, and from the moment they were restrained from their homeland to face the unknown future they don't know. Carrying with them their memories of reed pots, their canoes made of polished wood, their small and big drums which they often gathering at night, making a big circle around the fire. They were clicking on the drums, either in hands or by using sticks. Nowadays, this is what we do. 
We meet on mood nights to bring nice. This is our ancestors heritage. We believe that preserving this heritage is required and a sanctity responsibility such as the ritual of the sanctity. All the rituals that we implement to nourish the leadership that connect us with the path, presenting the nature of our cultural identity. Why this heritage is very important as a culture? Culture, actually, is a group of effort consists of literature, arts, and thinking. For us, the dark-skinned Iraqi may not have significant literary or academic role. We don't have tangible educational uh, product, but they ha we have artistic work and ultimately embedded along with the surrounding art. This is fact. Our own culture, our own education, actually our ancestors and fathers for a long uh, a time, which is not far away, it was all imprisoned and closed, afraid of being mocked. This is for us very sacred. For others, they don't know the meaning of these rituals. That is why they were afraid of making fun of the circuit. The reason behind keeping this culture practical as a private place only depends on the people in charge and close families only. Uh, this heritage came out of hiding, and this has happened after establishing Basra Band for local arts, and this was perfect opportunity for the black skinned people culture to be done and mixed with the culture and art at that time, at the 70s. The new culture was making enormous impact on the music and rhythm, that is why most of Basra Band for local arts component was about local images in the Arabian costume, the song of African lyrics, the rhythm, and the songs in African language. This heritage, yes, من قبل إيقاعاتنا كان كبير جدا. اللوحات اللي اشتغلتها فرقة البصرة الشعبية بأزياء عربية. which has made after revealing it to the public significantly in the quality of this artistic accomplishment at that time. And this is what gave the Basra a uniqueness associated with the legacy of a black skinned people. The black rhythms have changed the reality of sad Iraqi song. However, despite the truth that said this heritage interacted with the surrounding environment, but it is in risk. Now, likewise, the human is in constant danger of extinction, actually. We heard this from our fathers. We perceived our heritage orally from our parents, who in turn received it from their parents and grandparents. The materials was not recorded or written about until the recent century. On the other hand, there are a multiple hesitant attempts to record a musical note to one of the rituals in the past 18th century due to the need of Basra band at that time to use the heritage artistically that represent the famous role of Basra, which was known for this heritage as the city that add to the Iraqi song the sense of joy. The people who in charge of this heritage, and despite their keenness on it, they also kill it. Some old men want to keep it away from the eyes of strangers to preserve its value and the illiteracy is the second killer of the heritage. And this will impede the process of preserving the heritage and put it at the center. The main, the main source of this risk is illiteracy. How so you will defend your legacy if you were uneducated? The dark skinned community suffers from a high rate of illiteracy among its members. It is noticed in our rituals that the players and singers are men, while the performers are both genders. 
the illiteracy of the player makes him memorize music and singing by listening. And if those players encounter an accident, then the number of those who could play would decrease accordingly, Constant, constantly, consequently, that will lead to a successive forgetting of everything the ancestors left. Every poor Iraqi heritage is still delivered to children, despite this unoptimistic debate. How does this heritage reach them? The nature of performing rituals for dark skinned people depend on participation from all age groups, and each one has a role to play. Children get used to hearing songs and rhythms and rhymes become familiar to them and participate in singing and dancing. It does not necessarily mean that the child has memorized all the poems that are performed in the rituals, rather than he memorizes what he hears during the ritual. The heritage preserved by the families through their constant communication while part practicing the ritual. And sometimes, as we send our children to schools to learn, they send their children to ritual houses to learn how to play. Not all children. For example, there are only families who are in charge of performing these rituals. So it is necessary for the children to learn and to be trained on how to تحديداً أقول في البصرة كبشرة سمراء عوائل. Using poems to endure after years of the burden heritage responsibility. The social relationship in the black community in Iraq, Basra in particular, depends mainly on the performance of the traditional rituals which promote the heritage of black people and represent their belongings to each other. I order for this heritage to be continued and be able to portray and convey the joy and suffering of this community. It moves according to the social structure of the family. This we inherited from our ancestors through stories. The heritage also conveys to us how the ancestors who suffered from perception and exploiting by others. What is the social need for us as a minority that has an exception? We don't, we do not, we do the same as community in Iraq because we are celebrating our heritage together, men and women. Sometimes we discuss our family issues to find solution and taking the truth from our cultural rituals. And then we came up with a local solution. We treat our patients through cultural rituals sessions because of that we are believing that our grandparents were able to heal because we believe that our grandparents' soul is still present in the Yak, Maya culture, El Shannan healer is present in the ritual Native American. Uh, today, we are still delivering our heritage orally in the manner of oral memorization. Even with the presence of new technologies, we adopted the mechanism of fingers and memorize how to play. The tambour, uh, similar to harp, and the rhythm playing on the drums if the father is the one who inherited from his father or his grandfather. Is the place where the ritual are held and some a special place among us because his family preserved uh, their heritage continue to perform the rituals in their place of residence, which includes a special place of the heritage. We are from one tribe, but from African tribes. In several countries, our heritage is delivered and multi-rooted, including those rooted go back to Kenya, and north from Abyssinia, and some from uh, southern Egypt, from uh, Nuban, and others from uh, Zen, uh, Zanzibar. But when people die, the memory begins to decline, or behaviors that did not exist previously during the life of the ancestor, and the heritage uh, deviates from its correct path. How? Then can we make it a heritage capable of uh, word with a standard of a social change? Um, yeah, our chiming is, is the best solution of preserving heritage and this secure a very important social need for us, which is the confirmation of the, uh, of the history, of oral history of uh, the existence.
the social we need to make use of this social uh, communication and spiritual uh, bounds uh, we need them actually yes we need them to enforce foster this relation because we as a community we are very few small in number and we have a very special uh, character we are not similar to others to other communities and others actually we celebrate uh, a gathering uh, we don't uh, celebrate separate individually but we separate together men and women together just like kurdistan and iraq actually if you search from the, the south of iraq to the north of iraq you will never find phenomena just like ours we, ha we have so many uh, praise and sects and religious the groups in Iraq, actually, but you will never find uh, some rituals similar to us, and you will never find rituals uh, like us, where men and women are celebrating side by side. The ritual for us and the place of the ritual for us is a place uh, to solve our problems, and it is also not only to solve the problems, but to know the news of each other. We have our rituals that are similar in terms to the spiritual idea and different in a way similar to the social formation of the family. And our social association, such as wedding, heritage, is what unites us. Above all, because we are blessed with the rituals that we represent the beginning of a new life and in the hours of losing loved ones and their departure from life we resort to the traditional rituals and bid farewell to our dead with the sound of drums and this is the sad uh, a sad social event our social needs comes from the nature of our need to be surrounded by our heritage and the preserved heritage is evident that we are, we came from that continent that we were once in this place. We like music, we like instrument music. Actually, we honor uh, our, uh, our uh, instrument music. Um, we depend uh, to preserve this ritual uh, that the father uh, teach the uh, children. Uh, but actually, sometimes we don't understand the words because we didn't came from one uh, place. Again, some of us came from uh, Kenya, some came from Nuba, some came from Mozambique, uh, some came from Zanzibar. Uh, we, we don't have the same one origin. That is why not all songs are meant by everyone. It may not give one meaning because maybe in, in, in another search we may find the, the essential uh, meaning of the, the song that is performed during, during the rituals. Actually, if those people who have these songs died, then only memory has and if this memory ends that would be a problem how can we uh, how can we preserve this so that is why we really need to document all these uh, songs it is the, the social need of our society to establish a project to preserve and archive the african heritage is the right step for education or for educating the community and expand its perception. Thank you very much, and sorry if I get longer. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. If you have any questions. Yes. Uh, so the attendees, please, if you have any question uh, to Dr. Salva, please type in, in the chat, and uh, we will uh, answer your questions at the end of uh, today's session. And now, uh...
uh, we will uh, present the uh, person with us. Uh, she is Ilham Zubaydi, Ilham Nasser Zubaydi. But first, I will uh, introduce the uh, Lotus Cultural League. Uh, so Lotus Cultural Women's League was founded in 2016 by a local group of female artists in Basra, Iraq. The organization emerged from an identified need to support educated women to be leaders uh, advancing society for the betterment of all women, children and community members. Today, it is a cultural nonprofit organization with a mission to provide training, advocacy, cultural promotion, and psychosocial support. It serves women, youth, children, and any community members interested in advancing the civil rights and leadership of all women in society. Lotus Cultural Women League has uh, no core funding, but relies uh, slowly on individual donations and partnership uh, and partnership. And now uh, I will introduce uh, Ilham uh, Nasser Zubaydi uh, before she starts. Uh, she is a visual artist and the daughter of the late uh, well-known Iraqi visual artist Nasser Zubaydi. Since graduating from the music program at the Fine Arts Institute in Basra in Iraq in 1984. Ilham, uh, Ilham worked uh, extensively with local and international civil society organizations and noticed that uh, initiatives were mostly concerned with supporting widows and divorced <laughs> need to support educated women, such as uh, visual artists, playwrights, journalists, and writers who work in culture, art, and media in Iraq. Ilham started the Lotus Cultural Women's League in 2016. Today, it is, the, it is a cultural nonprofit organization with a mission to provide training, advocacy, cultural promotion, and psychosocial support. And uh, you can start now, Ilham, thank you. تحياتي للجميع شكرا جزيلا شكرا لدعوتي للتحدث Thank you for inviting me to talk One of the important targets of Lotus League since its formation is searching studies and how to preserve culture. Since Basra is the city inhabited by groups of African origins, which is distinguished by its musical and lyrical heritage, distinguishes from the rest of the province of Iraq, country of Badia. And since we are working on monitoring social phenomena and addressing them through the programs that we work on as well as one of the civil organization, uh, society organization whose aim is to provide support to the groups that need support. And since, as I mentioned earlier, the Iraqis of African descent live in the city of Basra more than the rest of the Iraqi cities, then this must be society has needs that must work hard. Uh, we as an uh, NGO, uh, we work on this. It is one of our responsibilities. Also, uh, they must uh, have the privacy and, and inheritance bearing the traits from the roots. Uh, if in a clothing, the way they live and work with traditions, costume, lyrics, and a musical heritage, legends and stories, beliefs, the places of their celebration that bring them together, the personalities who have influenced them throughout history and who still have the authority to decide on important matters between them, and even the type of some of the foods they prefer or 
specialized in manufacturing. So we had several ideas about the needs of those groups scattered in different areas of the city of Basra in order to work with them in several aspects through a voluntary effort sometimes and through programs supported by donors um, at other times. Therefore, a committee was formed in the association years ago on this subject. And this short committee included all of the uh, by voluntary work or so from a from a time as i said we established a, a committee including dr amr azraqi being very interested in the documenting of the history of this group of yeah dr thawra yusuf being a stakeholder she is one of of this community I am the president of the ASO, uh, of the organization, and I am interested in this matter personally. Among those works, I will mention the most important ones. We worked as part of a small grant to conduct documented oral interviews with a video recording via Zoom platform with elderly people of colors, darker skin, three women and two men. The speech was typed by transcribing it into a word file with its translation into English and, and translation into English by Dr. Wesson, myself. These meetings talk about the heritage and the spiritual rituals they practice with the type of the musical instrument used, the method of singing and dance movements, the places where these rituals are performed the type of speech and songs performed during them, and the difference in the performance of a ritual from the second, from one another. And for that, uh, what do these rituals also perform? The names of the families and the history of the leading figures across different periods of time and various regions were reviewed. The brown skinned community coexist in a friendly manner with the rest of the community, and they have their own special place in the Basra community. Despite this, the case of a school dropout was monitored among the children of these groups. This was through the implementation of a project created empowering women. And we notice the number of black skinned women who drop out of education more. And when conducting several Fox group interviews with IRC groups, we knew that the reason is the bullying that occurs in the school by some teachers and by some students. We noticed that the uh, number of uh, drop out uh, black girls more than others. Uh, during so many uh, several Fox group interviews, we, we made a survey and knew that there were uh, cases of bullying that occurred in the school uh, by describing it, it's not a physical abuse, but it's uh, emotional abuse, bullying about the, sh the shape of the hair, the, the color of the hair, the color of the skin. So we, uh, we raised some recommendations submitted to the uh, competent departments and authorities in order to look into this phenomenon. As we, as organization, we did not leave the matter at this point. Uh, Jesse represented the, the, the play Al uh, an interactive play that was presented in school and involving the students themselves in the discussion of the play prepared by uh, Amr al-Izraqi and supervised the training and the directing with Thawra Yusuf and the team of children across with uh, Angham as the holy teacher. Uh, students themselves participated in this. Uh, the, the play uh, actually uh, he supervised 
And, and so many uh, students who, who play the, the roles with the, of, of a black skin. The students' interaction was very good as various cases of bullying against the brown uh, of black skin children were rejected. We are working with the Iraqi ministry, actually, um, of culture and arts, and uh, being an organization registered in that ministry, to document the artistic heritage of that group, as well as within the project currently submitted to UNESCO, in order to demand the establishment of a center to preserve their heritage. Uh, in addition to establishing workshops to teach the making of their own heritage of musical instrument, uh, which has been proven through our records within the elderly that uh, this is about to disappear. We also demand that a note of all the melodies and special songs be recorded in a video recorded in order to archive them and create a museum for some rare uh, collections of a musical instrument, pictures, clothes. It also teaches a new, uh, sorry, uh, teaches, yes, a new and young people how to play and make these musical instruments. We also are working and by following up uh, some bloggers to collect the legacy from some manuscripts that some grandparents wrote down in order to them with a study and book that is going to be published or um, implemented uh, actually because, because uh, some people do not allow these works to go out of the community, that which we call a tambura. Uh, some songs are very nice and it's really sorry that we lose them by the end of, the, of those people. Uh, because so many people uh, died, especially during Corona and COVID-19. Uh, maybe uh, a lot of uh, this heritage will end by, by the death of those people. Back to our uh, work, uh, we are working also by following up some bloggers to collect, as I said, the legacy from some manuscripts from the current currents uh, to find them and translate them in a book by uh, Amr al Azraqi uh, and translate it into English to be a source of that cultural heritage. Uh, supporting women who serve their own suites by integrating them uh, into projects, especially uh, women of dark skin, uh, into projects to support working women uh, for their families, to support their families, and because it is very wanted by other people in their society. And uh, we support them and participate them in collective exhibition. Uh, held as outputs of these projects and offering them types of sweets that are mainly popular sweets. Throughout her story, Aura uh, Yusuf, uh, she represented a common experience that proved the similarity of some living situations and memories and their effort on them in a similar way. Uh, uh, she exhibited a, a, a video and it was a success. Uh, actually, she is working on a play that is called Lotus Women, uh, which represent um, many stories of different women with their cases. Amr uh, al-Azraqi uh, uh, changing it into a, a play. And uh, maybe uh, the curator is talking to the relation, love stories, and relation in this society. We are now seeking to record a session for a party uh, represented by a darkest women's group, which is an extension of uh, Ali Band. Uh, 
you you have just seen now the the, the movie that, that was one of lotus uh, products by the support of a funding uh, authority um, it, is, it is a type of uh, documenting uh, a band of a women band a musical women band uh, which um, Thaura talked about in the previous events in order to document and keep it in the archive of the uh, organization among the uh, rhymes. Uh, black uh, women, actually, they have bands and perform uh, some perform musical uh, performance in a specific ceremonies and uh, celebrations. We want to uh, document this uh, to preserve the whole heritage. The recording also includes uh, documenting the speeches with some of the female musicians and interviews. And now the United uh, uh, Union also invited the Dr. Thaura to participate in, in, in an event during the few uh, at the end of this season. Actually, there are lots of things we want to work on, uh, but you know the events, uh, the, the, the situation of the country. We are prepared to for a workshop, and uh, when an order is issued, and, uh, we cancel every one minute. Uh, sometimes we can't go uh, outside. Uh, we were preparing something, uh, but something would happen. Sometimes we are preparing some interview, but surprisingly, uh, we uh, sometimes uh, we are stopped because of the security situation. All this does not stop us from our work, whether it is on the topic or the rest of the projects we are working on. I'm sorry if I talk too long as usual, uh, but the work is a lot and the time available is uh, very limited. Thank you from the heart, Amr Zarkani. Thank you, Thora Yusuf. Thank you, uh, the whole group of uh, Lotus. Uh, thank you, Angam. Thank you, Wilson. Thank you, the whole uh, rest of Lotus team. Every single person works with four or five people. I love you all. Uh, you are really the spirit of a wonderful team. If they, if, if they are not with us, we won't be able to achieve. Uh, uh, sorry again, and thank you, everybody. questions uh, in the chat and please feel free if you have any question to Ilham or Dr. Thaura or Amr, type your question in the chat and uh, they will answer your questions. Uh, and thank you uh, Amr for answering and ex explaining all this to the to our audience today. But before I just want to highlight one thing, uh, my colleague Jesse will share in the chat the colors video. Uh, watch this video to learn more about unlearning anti-Black racism through Forum Theater, a recent collaboration between uh, Dr. Athaura, Dr. Amr, and Lotus Cultural Women uh, League and IRP, the Iraqi and American Reconciliation Project. And uh, if you need uh, to know more, you can follow uh, our website. We will uh, post in the chat uh, IRP website and Lotus Cultural League's website, and also Dr. Amr email if you have any question and we don't have time like at the end. So I will start with the last, uh, the question that we missed, I think from Kathy McKay. Uh, it, is, uh, it is my understanding during the time of Saddam education was very important for all children. Did this not include Afro-Iraqis? So I think this is to, to, to Dr. Amr. I think it's, uh, thank you for the question. I think uh, Dr. Thaura can respond to that, but yeah. I can respond it from my own experience. <clears throat> it is inclusive that education include everyone in Iraq. Um, we don't refute that. However, uh, as we said that according to our, uh, I mean, Lotus and our research, uh, Afro uh, Iraqis quit schools because of uh, because of the um, 
because of the discrimination and racism they face in the schools. Um, so I don't know if Dr. Thaura has a different uh, response to that. It was inclusive. Everyone should be educated uh, and included in schools. Um, but um, uh, unfortunately, uh, discrimination and racism, uh, it has been since even before Saddam's time in a school. And, uh, and this makes many, many of Afro-Iraqi students quit school early on in their lives and end up in, in uh, precarious positions and employment, uh, precarious employment position as well. I entered the school before Saddam and I finished my college and, uh, and, I, got, and I got my PH and MA during Saddam era and I finished my PhD after Saddam. Uh, education is free in Iraq. But actually, uh, the, conception, the concepts, uh, the notions are wrong. Uh, people are mistaken. They have also, uh, they, they, some of them are also lazy. Thank you. Shukran, Dr. Thawra. And I have another question also from yeah, me to, to Dr. Thawra. Uh, is the new gener generation of Afro-Iraqi community speaking their ancestral language? Uh, like their roots in Africa? No, there is no one. No, there is no one. If you are from the age of 60 years old, or the age of 18 years old, we will remember it. We ويخدم في بيوت تتكلم اللغة العربية تأثرت لغة الأم تكسرت تفتتت انتشرت بقيت منها شذرات كيف حافظ على بعض منها في الطقوس فقط نعم شكرا جزيلا so the, so the answer from Dr. Thera was uh, even uh, my generation the 80th or the 90th they don't speak the their original language. They they lost the language uh, after moving to another country uh, because they start serving in uh, like in another communities. They are speaking different language, so they start losing uh, gradually their language. No one speak uh, the ancestral language now. Uh, thank you for all the audience today and uh, have a good day. Thank you so much. شكرا جميعا واتمنى لكم يوما جيدا بالنسبه لنا ليله هانئه في العراق شكرا شكرا وسن ثانك يو شكرا للجميع ان شاء الله دائما نلتقي على الخير ان شاء الله شكرا جي سي يا ربي ثانك يو جي سي دكتور عمير دكتور وسن شيماء شكرا لك شكرا شيماء شكرا مع السلامه مع السلامه مع السلامه